So welcome to Microsoft Community Insight Podcast, where we share insights and stories from community experts to stay up to date in Azure. My name is Nicholas, and I'll be your host today. In this podcast, we will dive into as Cosmos DB, but before we get before we start, before we get started, I want to remind you to subscribe to our podcast on social media so you never miss an episode and it helps us reach amazing people like yourself. So today we have a special guest, special guest today called Jay Gordon. Can you uh, please introduce yourself, please? Sure. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Jay Gordon. I am a senior program manager uh, here at Microsoft, working specifically on the Azure Cosmos DB product. Um, before I worked at uh, Microsoft in that role, I was also a cloud advocate. So like many of our cloud advocates out there trying to help people understand how to use Azure, implement their different ideas, have them uh, basically the way I always put it is uh, I'm R2D2. My job is to help you be the superhero. And I feel like I kind of do that now. So uh, I work in specifically uh, growth and community. So I'm helping people be superheroes by kind of just being a navigator. I'm in the back of the X-Wing. Yeah, that's brilliant to hear. So as, uh, as part of the cloud advocate, so what of the best method of platform we can reach you and connect with the wider developer community? Sure. Um, well, now as a, uh, a program manager, I am not quite as in the uh, public as much as I used to be, because uh, what I used to do a lot of is a lot of streaming, a lot of social media, um, going on places like Reddit, um, using all those channels to be able to interact with different people who have interests around Cosmos DB. Uh, one of my regular things that I like to do is I kind of watch Twitter um, a lot. And I like yeah. to see, or X, whatever it's called now. Uh, and I like to kind of take a look at what people are currently saying, finding trends, and also answering questions. Sometimes people just want to have somebody notice that they're concerned with, you know, some specific problem they're having. They want questions about a feature. Um, they may even just want to say, I love the product or I hate the product. I, I don't care uh, whether you love me, you hate me, as long as you're paying attention to me and you know I'm there. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of great ways to reach and connect. Um, so I also would, like, go ahead, sorry. I, I, so in your opinion, would you think X is more preferred than LinkedIn over getting like better contact? Well, I was gonna, with... yeah, I was gonna get to that. Uh, LinkedIn tends to be the perfect way to get in touch with me and have me or the, uh, even the Azure Cosmos DB LinkedIn page, being able to uh, send us notifications with the same time me sending you all this different information, new product features, uh, news, blog posts, videos, we do all of it. Um, YouTube, another fantastic channel. YouTube may be one of the strongest ways of being able to communicate with developers and uh, different people in the IT world, mainly because let's face it, not a lot of us have time to sit down and read. We just kind of want the, the, the notes, we want yeah. the executive report, we want the demo, we want to learn how to do it and then start executing. So video, strong way to uh, communicate with the community. Yeah. So how would you, as a person in the Cosmos DB team, collect feedback and requests from users in that in like particular that want to learn for Cosmos DB and communicate to the product team? Mm -hmm. So we have some channels specifically for our MVPs where we can communicate with them uh, directly and get feedback. Um, we have like some internal channels. We have a direct. So if you want to get access to some of those channels and also uh, NDA information, the perfect thing to do is strive to be part of our MVP program at Microsoft. It's a really great way to be able to get um, a direct contact with people on product teams. Um, there, there's also other ways to get that uh, feedback and uh, different requests. Like I said, social media tends to be a really popular way. Um, people can easily just pop an idea. Uh, another great way to get feedback, like I said, is Reddit. Look at what people are saying. Um, also, 
doing things like, you know, having direct conversations with people. Like one of the things I like to do uh, when I go to events is to spend some time. I, I always like working booths. I always have for years. Back when I was a cloud advocate, I liked working booths. Now, you know, I just worked one for the uh, AI tour that rolled through here in New York City. And, you know, at Build this past year, I worked the booth there. Um, we had a small MVP event where we invited people out in Redmond for pizza and drinks uh, and, and just having conversations with people and saying like, hey, what's working for you? What would you like to see? And then taking that information and bringing it back to people on our product team to have some sort of influence. Um, there's also things like user voice where you can send in direct uh, feature requests. Um, you know, we, we need to be able to hear from the people who are using the product. And we also need to hear from the people who have not quite used the product yet, but are thinking about it. So getting, you know, requests and feedback from them, super important. Yeah. So I know Microsoft is very intense, very, very good at getting feedback, like all teams and stuff. Yeah. So in your current role, what are the most common challenges or barriers that you face and you overcome in your role? So some of the big challenges sometimes can tend to be sourcing content. Um, th there's, a, there's a term, content is king. Um, it can be queen or whatever else we want to call it. But content is one of the most important parts of being able to grow a product and mm -hmm. uh, be an advocate for it. So, you know, it can be a lot of work at times to be able to source all that content, especially from the remote community, like the outbound community. We want to be able to give them incentives to be able to spend that time to write something, to contribute something. And that's what's nice about the MVP program. Um, they're, they're a great place to kind of go and source content from when we need it. Uh, just in general, content creation, is, because it requires a lot of creativity as well, um, I've had to sit and kind of really take broad views of what other people are doing, the types of blog posts that work, and also like correlating tactics to metrics. I mean, let's face it, whether you're checking out how well a, um, an application is performing or you want to see how well a tactic for social media is, is, is going, having metrics associated with that um, really can be markers for success. So you want to see how to reduce the amount of uh, like 502 errors in your application. You're going to ultimately look at metrics. You're going to check logs. You're going to find why something isn't working and make corrections, write a, a fix. The same can be said for other things in trying to have outreach with people in the community. You look at what works. You kind of look back at the metrics associated with what did and what didn't. And then you make decisions on how to change tactics. You you may need to just patch a problem. It could be just somehow or another, you're not reaching the right people you want to. Um, so you find a fix, you, you, you add that patch and you hope that it works. And if not, sometimes you gotta take the repo, clean it out, clone it again and try again. Because, you know, sometimes rebasing your repo can be a little bit different. Ro going backwards can be a little different, difficult sometimes you got to start from scratch. You got to look at what wasn't working, create a new branch and go from there. Yeah. So uh, in you, for example, it, Microsoft celebrates success and your current role. How would you, as a, in your role, how would you just celebrate the success stories for your customers and partners? Or sure. Um, you understand? Yeah, yeah. Um, celebrating our developers, our contributors, the people out in our community, uh, it's so important to sometimes send a message directly and just say, hey, I really like that post. So you know what I'm going to do with it? I'm going to spread it out to the world as much as I possibly can. So I really love finding ways to kind of say to someone, you spent the time to curate a, uh, a, a certain amount of content around Cosmos DB, and I want to celebrate it. I've also done things like I've mailed people gifts. Uh, on behalf of our team, we sat, had some really cool swag that we sent out to people. Um, so really nice tote bags. You can probably, you can see the, the tote bag right there on, on my door that's behind <laughs> yeah. me. That's one of them. Uh, we had these really cool tote bags. Um, we also have done some really cool stuff around our conference, which I'll talk a little bit about 
Um, but uh, our conference, all of our speakers always get a, a really nice gift. They are people who have wins. They have wins because they are literally talking to us about those success stories. They're coming. So that's another really great way of celebrating is by giving people a speaking slot on um, our conferences. Uh, so specifically Azure Cosmos TV Conf, which we have once a year. So hearing from our community, having them submit ideas, being able to go ahead and give them a platform, that, that tends to be a real big way we try to celebrate people, is giving them a platform to share. Brilliant. Today's episode is uh, Cosmos DB theme, and then we'll find out what are the most recent or upcoming announcement in Cosmos DB that you're very exciting about that you want to share? Sure. So uh, we were talking about metrics logging just before. Um, a lot of people need um, that information to be able to be within compliance of some needs of their company. So we've got PG Audit for our Postgres product, uh, being able to give people just better visibility into how things are doing. Uh, we've got the Azure AI Advantage. That's something I really am excited about because we're looking for ways to get more people onboarded to AI services that we have here at uh, Azure. And one of the cool things is the support uh, that we will give you along that uh, road. One of the things that we're doing right now is we're giving people um, 40,000 uh, request units. If they are a uh, existing co-pilot user or Azure OpenAI user, uh, user. So if they have access to that service, we are going to give people uh, who sign up um, 40,000 uh, request units that they can use towards an Azure Cosmos DB account, it's something like $6,000 in savings. So I find that to be pretty dang exciting because I want people to start using the platform. And one of the reasons people are wanting to use the platform uh, and another big announcement we had recently was a uh, vector search in um, Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore uh, going GA. People want to have vector search capable databases right now. It's so important. Um, people are building AI app forward applications. Rather than uh, utilizing, say, Azure Search, you can use uh, vector, or I should say, Azure AI Search, you can use vector search directly with Azure Cosmos DB. That's great. Um, our free uh, tier for that particular offering. So let's say you want to try this Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore, uh, but you don't want to use a credit card quite yet. You want a free tier. You go to aka.ms slash uh, try Cosmos DB. Um, you get a free account. Give it a shot for 30 days. Um, use your own data integration with Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore. Um, for Azure OpenAI. Another great recent announcement uh, came out a few months ago. We've got some really great example applications as well. So you can kind of do a search. I'll, I'll see if uh, there's some notes I can give you uh, that Nicholas can go ahead and share with you all. Yeah, brilliant. So has this episode is coming to an end, what advice would you give someone that's, who's, start, who's just starting out with Cosmos DB? So my advice is one, realize it's a developer forward platform. Um, we want developers to realize that like databases, and sorry, uh, Frito the pup, he's, he's having a good time out there. No, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so being able to kind of think about these things in a developer standpoint, really big, um, the, the SDKs that we've got available, um, read that documentation around those SDKs, uh, try out the free tier, and then um, look at some examples. We've got this great repository of uh, design patterns. So different design patterns for NoSQL that you can use. Um, there's some demo apps there. I'll share that with you as well, Nicholas. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's a great place to get started, especially if you're, say, a C-sharp.net uh, developer. Um, there's a bunch of them in C-sharp. Uh, if you're using something like Python or Java, so many examples as well. Um, Try some of the demo applications. Also, if you're new, one of the things I really like is Microsoft Learn. There's a bunch of uh, Cosmos DB forward modules that you can take. It's free training. Uh, so check out Microsoft Learn. There's a whole bunch of tracks that uh, allow you to start learning about 
Cosmos DB. And uh, one of the cool things is there are sandboxes. So it's another, you don't need to commit any money. You just go ahead, you start using it. Yeah. So one of the things that we want to, we love to ask individual like yourself is like, get to know you as a person. So are you going to any events like tech events in the future, aside from the Cosmos DB Conf? I am going to be doing uh, virtually the MVP summit. I'll be helping out uh, James Cadella, who's going to be doing a great AI talk. Uh, I'll be moderating from remote um, and, and interacting with our MVPs and our audience uh, in general, but it's, it's pretty much an MVP audience. Uh, so we've got the MVP summit coming up and uh, myself, I'm not really traveling right now. Uh, I'm really enjoying being home and planning Azure mm -hmm. Cosmos DB Conf, which is coming up on April 16th of this year. So uh, be part aka.ms slash Azure Cosmos DB Conf. No, it's brilliant. Uh, any last words you would like to say to our viewers, Jay? Um, with great power comes for great responsibility. So uh, make sure that what you're building, uh, you you understand, you implement properly, you document, and uh, you make it easy for people to uh, collaborate and be part of what you're doing. Okay, brilliant, thanks. So thanks for your comment on this podcast, Jay. And we're, in a few weeks, it's gonna be on Spotify and Apple Music. And stay tuned, bye. Bye-bye.